Welcome to another episode of Women in Focus. I get to meet some of the most amazing women in, uh, during interviews with them. But the one that I am going to be introducing to you is truly um, an amazing, amazing, amazing woman. Um, I will have to read something about her instead of just telling you who she is. Her name is Anvita Abbi. She is a professor of linguistics at the Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi. An author of more than 16 books, some of them are lying here, beautiful uh, books. Um, Professor Abhi's work on tribal and other minority languages of South Asia has been amazing. She has bagged several national and international awards. Um, she was conferred with Padma Shri, which is one of the highest civilian awards of India in 2013 by the President of India. And she uh, has been a visiting professor at many universities in USA, UK, Germany, and Australia. And recently, in 2015, she received the Kenneth Hale Award. Dr. Professor Anvita Abhi is our woman in focus today. You're most welcome. My God, so <laughs> many <you>. things. <laughs> this is amazing. No, no I'm still working. <laughs> You're still working okay. at it. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. uh, Professor Abhi, uh, linguistic, mm -hmm. how did you get interested in that? Oh, that's an interesting question because I was a student of economics. Okay. And in fact, I was a student of Delhi School of Economics. And then those were the days when Amartya Sen was one of the teachers. Ah. But my father was very keen that I should uh, do something with language and literature. So he pushed me into linguistics. Neither he knew much about the <laughs> subject nor I did. But he could see that... I mean, I did do well in economics, but yes. he could see that uh, my heart lies in languages. Yeah. So he says, why don't you do something which has to do with language? So initially he suggested me to do literature. Okay. And I said, no, I would rather create literature than sit in the classroom and study <laughs> others' literature. And I did. I was a very famous short story writer by the age of 18, oh, 19. Wow. My first book on short stories came out on my 20th birthday. No kidding. Yeah. And <laughs> my short stories were translated in German, in French, in English, in Spanish, and various other Indian languages, Gujarati, Bangla, Marathi. What is your mother tongue? Hindi. Hindi is your mother tongue. Yeah. So where were you born? I was born in Agra. Oh, wow. No <laughs> kidding. <laughs> so, you know, my father said, OK, it seems that you love to analyze, yes. but you love languages. So why don't you do linguistics? Because linguistics is science of language. Yes. And uh, I remember I, I did join with a lot of sadness in my heart. And I was crying, as a matter of fact, when I had to join it. But in just a week or 10 days, I realized this is the subject for me. Isn't and that was so very amazing? Right. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I never looked back after that. So how did he feel <clears throat> that you should go into languages? Is it is it because you were? You were very fluent in many languages? No, I was not fluent in very many languages, but I was very fond of languages. Like in early childhood, I could speak Bangla. Okay. And I could, um, Hindi was my uh, mother, mother tongue. tongue. Yeah. And uh, I could pick up languages, perhaps he saw, although I did not, you know, much, but he. Right. And then when I was 14, 15, I joined French. So I learned a little bit of French also. So maybe he thought that, uh, you know... If she's yeah. good at that, why doesn't also, she do you know, that? Also, I'm a uh, daughter of a very famous poet of Hindi, Bharat Bhushan Agrawal. Oh my God, that's your dad? Yeah. And uh, he and my mother was also a writer. Uh -huh. And uh, so writing was, you know, in my it was in my blood, as you can say. And everybody else in the family was in fine arts or in literature. Right. And here I was the first person to do economics, perhaps he did not like it. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted you to be do, a linguist. Do, yeah. Now I'm mm. going to talk about your uh, major work later on, but I mm. want to take you back to your childhood mm. and, uh, and you've got forward thinking parents who wanted you to go into a field. 
अनलाइक सम ऑफ द पेरेंट्स हु वुड जस्ट से ओके लड़की की शादी करनी है शी विल गेट मैरिड हैव चिल्ड्रन डा 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 दैट वाजंट फॉर यू नो इट वाज एन इनफैक्ट ऑन द कंट्रेरी आई सेड व्हाई डू यू हेट इकोनॉमिक्स एंड यू नो व्हाट ही सेड ही सेज व्हाई डूइंग इकोनॉमिक्स आई नो यू विल गेट फर्स्ट डिवीजन यू आर गुड स्टूडेंट बट देन व्हाट यू विल बी अ लेक्चरर समवेयर एंड आई डोंट वांट यू जस्ट टू एंड अप एज अ लेक्चरर यू हैव टू डू समथिंग यूनिक एंड समथिंग गुड फॉर दिस कंट्री आर यू द फर्स्ट बोर्न या <laughs> How did you guess that? <laughs> Parents usually have lot of expectations yes. of their firstborn. Yeah, no that's very true. No matter whether it's a boy yeah. or a girl. Yeah, that's very true. The, you become like their ideal. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so, um <clears throat> any siblings? Yeah, I had uh, I should say had because she's no more my younger sister. Oh. She died of cancer. She was a dean of uh, in a college in America in Fremont. Right. And uh, I have a younger brother. who is uh, in delhi yes so now we are two of us so um studying languages b- being a linguist let me just take you back to the linguistic part of it all mm-hmm. um and we should take a short commercial break and then maybe do a longer version mm-hmm. of languages mm-hmm. um what are the major languages of the world mm-hmm. the old languages and i guess the rest of the languages do come out of these languages mm-hmm. right but uh professor abi let's take a short break and come back to it um and and I'll ask you that question again dr anvita abi is our woman in focus today don't go anywhere we'll be right back Professor Anvita Abhi is our woman in focus today. Um so we we're going to talk about languages and you have written over 16 books and I'm looking at some now. of Oh 18 now. Right. Okay, <laughs> over. Um so languages. What mm-hmm. are the major languages of the world? How many main languages are there from where other languages are derived? Oh that's a very difficult question there okay. are because at the moment Currently there are more than 6000 languages in the world 6000 more than 6000 holy but the linguists are of estimates that 50% of them will die at the end of the century no yes kidding. yes and i had been interested in uh, i shouldn't say preserving but mm. studying or re- researching on these so called dying languages and, and that's uh, your that's, that's your specialty that's my speci- specialty it right. has become so yeah. it started with i wanted to uh, work on tribal languages of india so i started working one by one mm-hmm. on various tribal languages and a point came i realized that uh, some of them are really endangered mm. so i shifted my focus to the endangered languages and i was also made aware of the fact that there are more than 50% of the languages of the world which are dying as far as your questions are concerned that question is concerned where these all languages were derived hmm. that's a very long question and there are all languages did not derive from one particular source no but let me tell you my confrontation or my exposure to the one of the oldest languages of the world maybe one of the oldest hmm. languages of the world is the great andamanese on which i worked for almost 6 years wow and uh, that brought me kenneth hale award by the linguistic society of america because uh, when i started working on this language there were only 10 speakers only 10 only speakers 10. and at the moment there are 5 and oh, those five are also not very fluent in their language oh my the why i say that is one of the oldest languages because andamanese hmm. in general and this has been proven genetically hmm. they are the first remnants of the for they are the remnants of the first migration from from africa africa 70000 years ago wow and they there is also genetically proven that these andamanese lived in isolation all their lives they never mixed with any other tribes they never came out of their island they never let anybody else come into the island that's why even if you read the travel log by marco polo and others that they think they are cannibals and all kinds of stories had been floated in the mm-hmm. past they were never cannibals mm-hmm. but yes they kept themselves isolated till the penal colony colony was made in 1858 by the britishers 
and then were known as Kalapani. Ah. So then they came into contact with the Britishers. So the that time. wasn't until the, yeah. the 19th century. And that's century. why the language also has preserved some archaic forms of one of the oldest languages of the world. How does a language die? Well, the biggest uh, factor which contributes to language death is the uh, uh, seizure or let's say stopping of the intergeneration transfer. When the children stop speaking the language, so the only the adults remain in the family and sometimes very, old, very, very old adults like grandparents, then language is sure to die. So intergeneration transfer is very important for the language, for language to survive. To survive. The mixture of other languages into a language mm -hmm. keeps the language going. Yeah, it that's the keeps alive because right. look at English. Yeah. English has changed drastically. If I speak yeah. a sentence of 500 years ago, old English, you yes. would not even understand a word of it. That's right. Because English has taken so many borrowings from French and from German and from Persian, from other uh, languages. You mm -hmm. see? So it is a mixture now of uh, many, many words from different languages. You've been to the Andaman Islands yeah. many a times. Yeah, many a times. I spent a lot of time in the jungles of the Andamans. Wow. Now, if you look at um, some of the pictures, and we'll show them in our, in our program, um, the, the people of the islands look like people from East Africa. That's true. They're so, Negroids. Yeah. They're so, Negroids. So, so they're... They are, as I said, they are the first... Uh, the remnants of the first migration that took place out of Africa. So do you know which part of Africa they would have come no, from? Nobody no, nobody knows nobody really knows very that. clearly, but some, somewhere in the east east of Africa. Yeah, so, so yeah. from my place. Oh. <laughs> I'm I from see. East Africa. I see, I didn't <laughs> I was know trying to. I was trying to mold <laughs> your question towards that. <laughs> I see. Because they, they do look like, um, yeah. you know, Af Now they African. are mixed because they have been intermarriages, mm -hmm. but there are some faces you can make out they're pure. Um, yes. They look pure, uh, great Andamanese. So they do. Yeah, and their language is a very unique. And I have written a grammar. Yes. Of this language, and I also wrote the dictionary, which is a multilingual, multiscriptal, interactive dictionary. So you can hear it. So can you say uh, how are you in w their language? Oh, they they don't say how are you, but no, uh, they, they, say, they always say are you okay? Okay. You know. So so they say nolbe. Nolbe. Mm -hmm. Nolbe. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And so when they greet each other, that's how they greet. They they don't. Uh, I mean, the greeting is rather formal, no? Yes. So they don't greet like what we say, namaste or uh, good morning or mm. something. They just go by nolbe, you know. <laughs> when you were when you were uh, doing your uh, linguistic uh, education. Mm -hmm. uh, was it all done in India or did you have to go outside of India? No, I did my master's in India. In India. And, and I was a gold medalist from Delhi University. Wow. I and didn't expect any less than that. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> you did not know me. <laughs> and then I went to, I got a very good fellowship from Cornell for my PhD. Okay. And uh, it was used to be called Human Humanities and Social Sciences Fellowship, mm -hmm. which was for three years. Mm -hmm. So I went to Cornell in 1970. Wow. And one of those was the days uh, Cornell was on the top, actually, in linguistics. And uh, it still is one of the best mm -hmm. universities. I applied at five universities in hand. Mm. I remember writing aerograms, you know, because I didn't have money to fill up the application forms <laughs> and paying the application fees. Yes. So I wrote five aerograms and I got admission with financial aid in four. Wow. So I had a tough time to choose. Yes. And I did not know what is an Ivy League school versus non-Ivy League school. And then I consulted some teachers of mine and they said, of course, Cornell, why do you think you should go anywhere else? <laughs> so, so leaving reached, India to go to Cor Cornell, mm, yeah. how was it for mom and dad and oh, your it sister? Was very bad. It was worse for me than for my father. He wanted yeah. to push me out. It was his, <laughs> his ambition that I was... Uh, fulfilling <laughs> yes because he wanted me to go abroad he says uh, in our family nobody has gone abroad you will go right and so I was made the scapegoat and I, <laughs> I had never stepped out of the house I mean I never was even a boarder right. in a hostel so if it was for me uh, almost like you know breaking away from my roots and ties 
I didn't want to go. No. <laughs> <laughs> but you did. But I there didn't. was a reason. There was the goddess was looking out for you because <laughs> you were going to meet your uh, your life <laughs> life partner. Life partner. Yeah, it so happened. The very first day. Yes. The very first <laughs> evening, I should say. Yeah. Yeah, I met uh, Satish, mm -hmm. uh, my husband now. But at that time, he was uh, deputed by the Cornell India Association to receive new students. Ah. So he was at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, <laughs> so it was love at first sight. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, and he was, he was also studying there? He was a student of physics. Yes. And uh, he, in fact, the uh, physics department was very well known those days because of Feynman, the Nobel laureate, and there was Hans Bette, another Nobel laureate. He was a student of Feynman. Wow. So, so he was working with... Uh, uh, so great another, minds meeting together. Yeah, I do not know about that, <laughs> but yes, we. It looks like two lost friends meeting <laughs> together. <laughs> and so, so when was it when you realized that mm, I like this guy? Oh, that's difficult to <laughs> think. Uh, pretty soon, I believe. By the end of uh, I reached there the end of August. Yes. And by end of October or November, I think. And I so, had, did you tell mom and dad about yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, right away. Yeah, right away. And, and they, they said, you are too young. I was just 21. Yes. And they, they thought said I was too. They said, you take your time. I think it's too, because you're lonely. <laughs> that's why you're saying so. <laughs> <laughs> so. So, you waited. No, we didn't. In fact, uh, my husband, uh, he cleared his uh, A exam, as they say, or B exam, sorry. Yeah. Which is the defense of yes. the Viva in January. Or February was it February was some, yeah. sometimes that time right in the March we got engaged after his exam yes and then we came back home and then we got married in July isn't that yeah. beautiful so within a year I got married it seems so funny <laughs> I'd gone for a PhD and, and here I is coming back to get married <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about your your life with uh, uh, Satish mm -hmm. and your children but well, let's take a short break and sure. we'll come back. Professor Abhi is our woman in focus today. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Women in Focus. Our Women in Focus today is Professor Anvita Abhi. So, so you met this guy, you got married to him, and then you <laughs> finished your PhD. How difficult was it to finish the PhD? It was very difficult because Satish was, as I just said, on the way out hmm. to the, from the university and I was just beginning. You're right. And so for one year he didn't take a job outside Ithaca. Hmm. which is the name of the place where Colonel is. Hmm. So he took some uh, part-time teaching in Ithaca College and right. he also taught at Cornell. But then the next year he, he got offered from Stony Brook. Mm -hmm. So he was teaching at Stony Brook and I was still at Cornell. So we used to commute every 15th day. Oh, I see. I remember I wrote a short story on that experience <laughs> and that became a big hit too. Oh, that's good. <laughs> now talking about books, okay, uh -huh. before books,